When looking at the most famous Disney villains, someone who definitely ranks up there is Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians. And with the release of a new film centering on her younger exploits, she is back in the spotlight again. What's fascinating about the Dalmatians franchise is how many times Disney has gone back to it, and thus there are multiple versions of Cruella out there. A lot of her traits, though, go back to the original book, The 101 Dalmatians, written by British author Dodie Smith. Smith actually owns several Dalmatians, and one day a friend told her that spots would look lovely on a fur coat. This inspired her to then write a book and created the character of Cruella de Vil as the main antagonist. If you're familiar with the animated film, it's actually fascinating reading the original story. A lot of the structure is mostly kept the same, but the filmmakers did combine and remove a few characters and change some names. In the book, Pongo is paired up with a dog named Mrs., while Padita is a lost dog that owners find to help nurse the puppies. Their owners are simply called Mr. and Mrs. Dealey, with the former working in finances rather than being a musician. They also have two nannies who live with them. As for Cruella de Vil, her characterization is the one we're most familiar with. She's a former schoolmate of Mrs. Dealey, obsessed with fur coats, drives at top speed in a slick car, and was born with black and white hair. In the book, it's actually her husband who's in the fur coat business, and happily agrees with her demands for what pelts she wants to wear. Cruella also has a cat, who she does not seem to have cared that much about, and even casually brings up in conversation that she drowns its newborn kittens. You know, because skinning puppies apparently was not quite evil enough. She's assisted by two brothers named Saul and Jasper, who watch over the Dalmatian puppies in Hell Hall. The Dalmatians actually end up farting Cruella by ripping apart all of her furs in her house, ruining her husband's business and affecting their finances. The book ends with the Dealies buying and renovating Hell Hall for them to live together with their 101 Dalmatians. It's actually quite a charming and imaginative book, and it was fun reading it for the first time. Shortly after the book was published in 1956, Walt Disney immediately read it and loved it, and decided the story would make a good animated film. Smith herself actually hoped Disney would show interest in 101 Dalmatians, and was really pleased with how the movie turned out. Mark Davis was assigned to animate Cruella de Vil, while Betty Lou Gerson was hired to do her voice, and Mary Wicks provided the live-action reference. Cruella definitely stole the show, as she displays such a glee at performing this terrible action. It's not even for profit or anything, she just wants the puppy fur for her own sick pleasure. And when she gets angry and annoyed, Davis really went all out with the animation and her different expressions. She's portrayed as quite conniving and smart, making her a real threat for the Dalmatians. One of the most memorable scenes comes when she chases after the dogs in her car. You see her at her breaking point there, and how she'll stop at nothing to get that fur coat. Even though 101 Dalmatians is not a traditional Disney musical, Mel Levin was hired to write a few songs for the movie. He tried a few different tunes for Cruella de Vil, before landing on the one we all remember. Written by Roger within the movie, it's a delightfully catchy song that perfectly describes what makes her so frightening. The fact that the song becomes a massive chart-topping hit by the end of the film is also hilarious. 101 Animations became one of the most successful films of 1961, and was a much-needed win for Disney Animation, following the disappointing box office performance of Sleeping Beauty a few years earlier. In 1967, Dodie Smith actually published a sequel to her book, titled The Starlight Barking. I have not read this one, but it involves the world falling under deep sleep and the dogs have to solve the problem. Cruella is revealed to have moved away from fur, so the dogs leave her alone. The book was never considered for a possible sequel, but the Disney artists did think about having Cruella be the villain in The Rescuers at one point. They decided to go in a different direction in the end, but as we all know, there will be plenty more appearances from Cruella de Vil in the future. Through several re-releases, the popularity of 101 Dalmatians would continue to rise, and when adjusted for inflation, it's still the second highest grossing animated film of all time. So it's little surprise Disney would greenlight a flurry of new projects based on the movie. In 1996, the live-action film version of 101 Dalmatians was released, with Glenn Close playing Cruella, and she's easily the best thing about the movie. She's the right kind of over-the-top, but she plays into Cruella's love for fashion and willingness to murder these puppies. Sigourney Weaver and Kathy Moriarty were also considered for the role, but I think Close was ultimately the best choice. She even attended the premiere in the costume and everything. Now that's dedication. The film is notable for introducing her as a fashion mogul, a character trait that has stuck since. Meanwhile, Anita is depicted here as Cruella's employee rather than merely an old school friend. Outside of Close as Cruella and the well-trained animals, I find most of the movie just consists of John Hughes' usual writing tricks in the 90s, especially in the third act 
but we witness one ridiculous pratfall after another. At some point, it just feels like we're watching Home Alone with animals in place of Macaulay Culkin. The movie was very successful, though, resulting in a sequel titled 102 Dalmatians four years later. Cruella is released from prison and is hypnotized, so she has an aversion to fur. That one could have been an entertaining and funny story for a sequel, but it does not last for very long. Barely 30 minutes in, Cruella is back to her old self and decides to steal Dalmatian puppies again. To make a fur coat, again. So 102 Dalmatians just descends into a rehash of the first film, but with the addition of Gerard Depardieu, an annoying talking parrot, and a pair of dull human protagonists. Glenn Close gets a few amusing bits, but she eventually starts taking that performance up to 200. The most bonkers thing about 102 Dalmatians, though, is how convoluted Cruella's evil plan is. Every step is so perfectly planned and so precise, and amazingly, these steps go off without a hitch. She somehow knows exactly where the other characters will be and how they will react. Is she Cruella de Vil or the Joker from The Dark Knight? She's only undone because she underestimates the Dalmatians. Between the live-action films, an animated series aired for a few seasons on ABC. 101 Dalmatians, the series, appears to take place in the same universe as the 1996 film, as it retains Roger being a video game designer. However, the creators went off in their own direction, especially with Cruella. What I find most interesting is the puppies the series chooses to focus on. Lucky, Rolly, and Catpick are the puppies given the most attention, just like in Dodie Smith's book. In fact, Catpig made her screen debut in the series, after being omitted from the animated and live-action films, so points to the show creators for doing their research. Regarding Cruella, she's gone from merely being a fashion magnet to having an entire empire. She's also moved away from fur, and instead her evil schemes usually involve real estate, mainly trying to get the farm Roger and Anita moved to. She also has a pet weasel and quits smoking. For some reason, Anita still works for Quella and is still very good friends with her, although Roger retains his dislike towards her. The puppies even save her a few times, and they even go on vacation together. It's safe to assume the events of the movies played out differently in this universe. In the show, Quella is definitely portrayed in a more cartoonish manner, and April Winchell does a hilarious job of voicing this version of her. The series as a whole is also quite entertaining and cleverly written, and watching a number of episodes again, I found myself laughing multiple times. Disney eventually produced a direct-to-video sequel to the animated film, titled 101 Animations 2 Patches London Adventure. This one actually stays very faithful to the continuity of the first movie, although I cannot say the story excited me. The most impressive thing about the sequel is the animation, which has a lot of fluidity and captures the unique look of the first film. Cruella de Vil's arc has her become an art of Shinado, although she eventually goes back to her desire to skin those Dalmatians and even ropes in Horace and Jasper again. Cruella is voiced by Suzanne Blakesley, who had previously played the role in 102 Dalmatians video game. She does a great job of emulating Betty Lou Gerson's portrayal. I just wish her evil plot was a lot more interesting. Cruella then appeared in the television series Once Upon a Time, the Disney Channel movie Descendants, and plenty of video games. But Disney would not entirely revisit the Dalmatians again until the animated series 101 Dalmatian Street. Premiering in 2019, the show revolves around the descendants of Pongo and Petita's pack. They all live together in a house in London, with no humans around as they get into a variety of scrapes. I have questions. First of all, why are they back in the city after Raj and Nita moved the Dalmatians to the countryside, specifically so they could have more room? And secondly, where are the people? What happened to Raj and Nita's children or grandchildren? Those queries aside, I thought 101 Dalmatian Street was an amusing and entertaining show, and I especially liked the backgrounds and character designs. The creators were able to make the show distinct with a modern look that fit with this version of London. In the series, the Dalmatians encounter Cruella's great-nephew, Hunter, who is secretly working for Cruella. Because it's set several decades after the animated film, she is now very old, and apparently still obsessed with skinning those dogs. She's voiced by Michelle Gomez of Doctor Who and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina fame, and she really sought to make this Cruella as creepy as possible. Surprisingly, 101 Dalmatian Street only aired in some international territories, but you can now watch the entire series on Disney+. Last week saw the release of a new live-action movie, and a new entry in the Dalmatian-verse, Cruella. Directed by Craig Gillespie and featuring Emma Stone in the role, the film seeks to provide her origin story. Well, sort of. As you may have noticed in this video, the 101 Dalmatian's continuity and timelines have never been consistent. With the exception of Patch's London Adventure, writers appear to wipe the slate clean and retcon events to fit with their own interpretation. 
Each time, Disney has revisited the property and they've drifted further and further away from Dodie Smith's original story, and the creative talent pick and choose what elements they desire. Knowing this is probably why I was not as bothered with the retcons and other deviations shown in Cruella as other people have. I actually enjoyed the movie, although as I mentioned in my review, I thought it really started to pick up when her evil side began peeking out. That's when Emma Stone is allowed to shine, and I like watching her transformation into Cruella de Vil. A lot of people expected the movie to make us sympathize with Cruella, and while there's a little bit of that, the film is also very much about someone using her wits and losing any remaining innocence she has in order to become wealthy and powerful. And she does do a lot of criminal activities over the course of the movie, which is admittedly something normally uncharacteristic for a lead Disney protagonist. Will Disney then retell 101 Animations again with Emma Stone in the role? I imagine if they do, there will be some changes and alterations to the story, but that's to be expected at this point. Reading and watching the many, many takes on Cruella since Dodie Smith first put pen to paper, it's clear why she remains on everyone's minds. As the song says, she's a vampire bat, an inhuman beast. She ought to be locked up and never released. The world was such a wholesome place until Cruella, Cruella de Vil. See you next time.